What's everyone? It's Matt Rosick, and this will be the second video on the Troy McDivitt uh, Rhino kit. So I've got a bunch of little projects going on. It's been a while since I've done multiple projects at one time, but I'm kind of in a spot where I'm waiting for answers on one project, and I, I just got to keep the ball rolling here. So um, I used to get myself in a lot of trouble. I'd have like four or five projects going on, and I just was getting very stressed and overwhelmed uh, with that, and it was just a bad idea. But that was when I was working full time too, and I'm not working full time right now because I'm still looking for a job. So I got a bunch of little projects. This is a relatively small project. Um, to, I, I did an intro video to this a couple of weeks ago when this first came in. And so I'm gonna get the prep done, uh, hopefully today I'll get the prep done. Um, as, I would, as I said in my intro video, it's a great sculpt. This is one from Troy McDivitt. If you don't know who he is, look him up. I'll put a link down to his Facebook page below. I absolutely love this piece. Uh, just a kind of a quick overview. Again, the sculpt is freaking fantastic. Uh, the casting quality is very good. There's a, uh, the, the most cleanup. There's a mold line that goes through the rhino's torso um, and on the arms and stuff here. So what I'm going to do first before I start gluing any of this together is I'm going to get rid of the mold line. Um, on the arms and torso. Uh, but before I even do that, I'm gonna, um, I was looking at this, and I think I may have mentioned in my first video, he, does, he, he wobbles a little bit on the base here. So I'm going to uh, I'm gonna fix that. You know, it's a relatively easy fix, but you see here he, he wobbles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm basically gonna pick a foot to keep flat on the base as is, and I'm gonna use some, my little Bondo trick that I do and I'm gonna fill in um, where it's, where he's not sitting so flat. And I gotta pick the best side where I think it'll be the least noticeable. And I don't think it's, um, I'm not sure why he's wobbling, like what's causing the wobble. I just think that maybe, Maybe through the molding process, the keys got off just a hair. I mean, he fits really good in there. He just wobbles too much. And even if I pinned him, I, there'd be a slight gap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically just gonna make like the imprint of one of his feet with Bondo. And then we're gonna take this foot. So, sorry, I gotta reach across. First thing I gotta do is I'm going to take Vaseline or petroleum jelly, whatever you wanna call it. I'm going to coat the, 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 this foot in petroleum jelly and this will, will prevent the filler from sticking to this because what we're going to do is we're going to basically do an imprint of his foot on the base and, I'll, and I put it up on the sides. I get it, I mean I, I slather this stuff on there and don't worry because it all gets washed off later so I'm going to do it when I wash the kit. So I just put a lot on because what you don't want to do is uh, Bondo this to the base. And turn autofocus off. Because um, then you'll be, then you'll cry. <laughs> I have come close to doing that a few times. If you, even even with this on there, if you let the Bondo cure 100%, there's a good chance it's stuck. Because it creates a vacuum. Because um, it's a perfect fit. There's no where for air to get in. So it's a good, and I'll show you, I'll tell you, I'll, when I show this, I'll sh tell you when the perfect time to take the piece off is. It's when the Bondo starts to kick off. It's a little on the soft side. It's not 100% cured. So just make sure you get this all over any places where Bondo may stick to it. Up on the sides a little bit in case we get a little up on the sides, just like that. Okay. Now, um, I'm getting low on my Evercoat, so I'm just, I'm actually going to use the Bondo. So, I've said this before, Bondo is simply a brand name. Um, body filler is what this is all called. Bondo is just a brand name. Everyone, I've always just called it Bondo, but Bondo is the brand name. But you can get other brand names of body filler, but this is just, you can get really expensive versions, you get really cheap versions. This is kind of like the universal um, brand. This is what I used when I was painting cars. Um, 
My other go-to is Evercoat. I've got this turned upside down because it's getting, I actually need to replace this. It's kind of drying out inside a little bit, unfortunately. This is really good because this flows very nicely. This, the bond is a little thicker. This is a little runnier, but this is way more expensive. So this little container right here, which is uh, 30 fluid ounces, is about 40 bucks. It's expensive. This gallon jug of Bondo, which is what, three or four times the size, is like 30 bucks. So this is cheaper and you get four times as much. But this is much easier to sand, a much better finish. Um, so I use that on small. Whoops. Oh crap, I just spilled my, my dirty water everywhere. Yay for me. Making a mess. Hold on, let me get a paper towel. I got a cup over here that I dump all my dirty water in from painting in and it just spilt over here in the background. That's why I can make messes while I record. I record everything. I record all my screw ups, me cutting myself. <laughs> just show it all. <laughs> oh man, that's my life though. It's never perfect, that's for sure. I'm always screwing shit up. Okay, that's fine. No big deal. <coughs> At least it wasn't full of black right there. That'd be messy. Anyway, go back to this. So this sand's much smoother. It's much runnier. The bond is thicker. And um, it's just cheaper. But they work just as fine uh, for both. Now, what I am out of is scrap cardboard for mixing bondo. So I've been just using a pad of paper, which isn't the best thing to use for mixing bondo, but that's what I've been using lately. Um, so I was opening this up. Okay. And you can see we're about, this is about half gone. This, I've had this, I've had this gallon jug for a couple years. Um, you don't want to leave it out. It dries out. Um, it can dry out if you leave the lid off. And even having the lid open a little bit, a little bit every now and then will introduce We'll introduce air into the can, which will cause it to dry out over time. So, um, yeah, I just got like a little, one of my little spreaders that I've cut down. I'm going to just grab some. And I always mix more than I need because um, it's better to have, you know, it's better, in my opinion, to waste a little bit than be in the middle of like doing something. It's like, oh, crap, I need more. <laughs> Uh, and then a hardener. So this uses a cream hardener. It comes in different colors. This just happened to come with blue, but it comes in red, it comes in white. Don't use white because you can't see it. Um, you can't see it mix up. You really need blue or red because it shows you how well you've mixed it up. It doesn't matter the color, I'll do the same thing. And I tend to put less than what they recommend just so I have more working time. I got a little chunk there. So, there is a general rule of how much hardener you're supposed to use. I don't remember what that general rule is. It's like forever, it's basically like if you have a blob of resin or a blob of Bondo this big, you'd use like a ribbon of two inches of, of hardener or something like that. It's like, it's based on that. I just kind of go by the color of the mixture. Okay, so we're gonna mix this up. This is way more than I need, but it's all right. So this is just gonna keep him from wobbling and I am gonna pin him to the base too. We'll do that next. But you notice here, this isn't really, it's a very, very light blue. I didn't put a lot of hardener in here because I wanna give myself some time to work. Um, it'll just take longer to dry or cure I should say. You never want to take like if you need more bondo, never take your what what has hardener on it, like your little mixer here, and put it back in the can. So you'll kick off you'll kick off the, the can of the can of bondo. It won't kick off the whole can, but it'll kick off the surrounding areas and you'll just have to dig it out. So and when I mix this I fold it and I push it down. It just helps prevent air bubbles. So don't mix it like this. Fold it and push, fold, push, fold, push. You're folding it in. It helps prevent air bubbles. You might still get some, but you'll just get fewer. 
Okay, this mixed up pretty good. So now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically put this on like I'm frosting a cake around his foot. I'm gonna put a little bit in the key. I don't really don't need to re-key it. The keys are actually really good. What it needs is around the bottom of the foot. And then I'll go back in with the, some sculpting tools or whatever and I'll just kind of recreate some of this rock texture in this. And it's better to have more than you need, let it ooze out and then go back and kind of sculpt it. So I'm going to put more than I need. I'm not sure you're seeing that or not. And this is very similar to the color of the base, so it's maybe hard to see. Okay. Like I say, I don't need a lot in the key. I don't want to put too much in there because then it'll be hard to. Alright, now we're going to stick the rhino on there. Alright, give him a good push. And so I've got him pushed down there, you see all that ooze out? Actually, more than I want, so I'm gonna take. Sorry, my hands away. I'm gonna hold this down. I'm gonna clean some of this up. And just take some excess off with a Q tip here before it starts to kick off. And I can come in here and I can kind of push this in to fill in the gap a little bit. sculpting tools here. Got these silicone tools here. I'm just going to use that to kind of... This will help keep him from wobbling so much. Once I pin him, he'll be fine, but I just wanted to kind of sure him up a little bit. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check how this Bondo is curing. Just kind of blend that into the base a little bit while it's still wet. I'm getting some of this excess now. Let's see a little bit of work. Here in a little bit. Okay. Another thing about the Bondo over the Evercoat is the Bondo is actually dries harder. It seems like it's like a it's better for this kind of application where you're filling in gaps or trying to get some stability in something. The Evercoat's really meant for like a final finish kind of application. Typically the Evercoat, like when I was doing painting cars and stuff, <clears throat> you would do your initial body work with Bondo, you know, get your den out, fill it with Bondo and all that stuff, get it, get it about 90% there. 
and then the ever coat would be like the last 10% of what you would use for a body filler. So it's really meant for finishing, more of a final finish thing, but that's why it's good for like little things. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. It blends in nicely. So I, I do this while this bond is wet, I can kind of work it and sculpt it a little bit. And then hopefully when I pull this out, I really don't have to do any, maybe just do a little sanding on it just to kind of blend it a little bit better. But Okay, so while that's sitting there, now what I have, I don't want to move him because he's in a good spot. But over here I've got the Bondo I mixed up um, that I put on on the base. And I'm going to just check this. It's starting to, it's starting to, to firm up a little bit. Once this gets to about, oh I don't know, 60 to 70 percent cured. You don't want to wait till it's 100 percent cured to pull, pull that off. But you can see here when I pulled it up, it, it, it didn't stick to the, the spreader. It means it's starting to, to kick off. Right now it's just it's kind of bouncy. Um, if I try to pull them off right now, there's a good chance that even though there's Vaseline in there, it would pull some of the filler off of the base. So I want this about 70% cured. So we're going to let that sit for a second. Let's see how that goes. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we're going to see about them off the base here. Oh, I got two coffees going. I got my coffee from yesterday and my coffee from today. I think I'll mix them together. That'd be good for. It's always great to have a big cup of espresso while you're painting. <laughs> it's the worst. And you've got a shaky hand from the caffeine. And you got to pee a lot too. All right, so we're gonna let this sit here. And it's not the most exciting thing to watch, but this is getting to the point where I don't want to pause the video and come back um, because this is gonna almost to the point where I can take them off the base. So if I'd mixed in more hardener, I wouldn't have had as much time to work with the bondo to kind of blend that in and kind of sculpt it the way I wanted. So we're gonna sit here and while it's carrying. Let's look at one of the arms as far as the mold line goes. So the mold line's not too bad. I'll probably take my Sharpie trick like I do and outline that here in a second. Alright, we're getting there. Still a little, little, too, a little too spongy. Okay, while that's kind of caring for a mold line, uh, what I like to do is I like to take a sharpie and I do this. I'm in the middle of doing a Gundam kit too. And I do the same thing, and I mark it with a sharpie, like this. There's those two things. This just helps me know where it is while I'm working, and it acts as a guide. Now the great thing about the mole line is once it goes across the knuckles here, it kind of blends into the wrinkles, so I don't think I have to worry about it too much. When I prime it, that'll let me know. But I need to get rid of these mold lines before I put them together because I won't be able to get to these areas after he's together. Okay. Let's check our bond down. Still not quite there anyway. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with an X-Acto blade. I don't want to really sand because I don't want to lose the texture in the skin. I can always put it back in if I need to, but I'm just using a new blade. And seeing how much I can get out with the, the blade. You can see there that sharp line, that's the mold line. Of this blade and kind of going in between all the details to get that mold line out. You can see there, 
So right there, I got a sharp red line. That's the mold line. Here it went away. So in a piece like this, we got to get in all these little nooks and crannies. This is a great, great method. Just kind of scrape it away instead of trying to sand it. If I tried going with sandpaper, I would, have, I would obliterate all this cool skin detail. This way I can really localize. All right, sorry. Now I'm gonna take them off the base. It's about to the point where it's not so spongy, but it's not 100% hard. I'd say it's about 60 to 70% cured. And let's take them off. And he pops right off. See, no stick, there's no bondo on his foot. So that will wash off nice. So I'll just take a paper towel and get the initial bit off. Just the initial bit of petroleum jelly and stuff. Just like that. I'll put that to the side for a second. And here you can see what we did. We basically just kind of filled in the gap here that's underneath the foot. Um, I will just kind of take this ridge down a little bit. Um, not much, but I'm gonna let this cure up all the way. But taking all that excess off while it's wet, now it's all just blended into the base. Like I don't have to go through here and do any re-sculpting because it's already done. Um, but just where I get this kind of hard ridge from the outline I'll take care of. And that takes care of that. Now he shouldn't wobble. Yeah. Now he's pretty solid. And then especially when I put a pin in it. That'll be perfect. <clears throat> so actually, I'm gonna put the arm to the side for a second. <laughs> what I do, I jump around. And let's go ahead and pin it real quick. I can put the bondo away and done with that. For now. I probably use Aves when I uh, do the seams on the arms because I just have more sculpting time. Okay, for a pin, what I'm going to do, let's kind of see what I have for pins. He doesn't need a big, he doesn't need a real big pin. What I have. I think I just do an eighth inch, or an eight, and one, and, uh, one eighth inch uh, pin, he'll be fine. So, what I like to do is obviously get a drill bit. That's one eighth inch. I think that's one eighth. Double check because I was using it earlier. Yeah. Again, this is just to keep him from falling over for any reason if he gets bumped. So, what I do is I'm going to pin this side. And first of all, I'm just going to kind of eyeball the center of the key. It's going to be real loud because it drills right next to the microphone. And I went all the way through because this will help me line it up easier and I can fix that hole here in a second. Now I'm going to put them on the base. Like this, <coughs> excuse me. And I actually like to clamp them down. So he's, so he's on there. If I can, let's see if I can clamp them down. I mean, it fails here. Probably not, because the way the sculpt is, I don't think that clamp's gonna hit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put it in my lap here, so I'm gonna move the camera. All right, so now he's in my lap. And he's on the base. I wanna make sure he's seated well. 
And then we come with the drill. Into his foot, and then there's the hole for the key. Alrighty. Okay. So he's hollow. It's not going to be very deep. Because the bottom of the base is pretty thin. See, right now it's coming through the bottom. Just a little bit. this off. Actually that's steel. That's not gonna that is not gonna cut off <laughs> if that's steel. I don't think I can get any further. If I just grind it down a little bit with my Dremel. Yeah, because right now it's it's hitting the coming out the bottom by, by about a sixteenth of an inch. So what I'll do is I'll grind that down and he'll be keyed perfectly. And that's just another step between the Bondo and the key from him falling over. Um, so I'll do that a little bit later. So he's been keyed, he's been pinned. And uh, so I'm gonna continue working on the mold line on this whole kit, just like this with the blade. I'm not gonna record the whole process. I think you get the idea. But basically going in here and just kind of Scraping it away. That's a little bit of a step there, actually. It's not a mold line. Steps are the worst. When the mold slips. And then when I prime this, I'll, just, I'll see if I need to go back and kind of re sculpt any of this um, skin texture in. If I do, it'd be relatively simple just with the, the scribing tool and scribe some, scribe some of it back in there. So I'm going to do this on the arms and the body, and then once that's done, we'll uh, we'll pin and glue the arms in. So I'll come back when I'm ready to do that. Okay, so I'm working on the mold line here, and I want to show you that I am going to go with the Dremel on a very low RPM with the little kind of uh, tip on here because I want I can't get into the the grooves of the elbow here. So I'm just going here very slowly. I don't like using a Dremel on this kind of stuff because I feel like I go too far. And I'm, I'm not putting any pressure on it. I'm going to Dremel do the work. Just to get in there. Just like that. In here. And these little wrinkles. That I can't get to with the blade or sandpaper. Again, this is on the lowest RPM that my drum will go to. Just real slowly, taking away the mold on the side of the camera again. And I'm going to try a little bit right here. Again, just real low RPM. And since this is round, I'm going to rotate the piece back and forth so I don't create a flat spot. One thing I hate, I hate, 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 is when uh, chip producers go in. I appreciate the effort and they clean up the mold line, but then they go crazy, crazy aggressive and they create a flat spot. I'd rather just leave the mold line, leave it, leave it all dirty in there and let me deal with it because it's more work to have to go back and install something than... Uh, to just take the time to 
work around the details like this. So right here is like a little skin deep tongue just use that. Again, I want to obliterate this cool sculpted skin texture. I don't know if you can hear me through the Dremel, but... There's a wrinkle right there, we'll make sure we preserve that. Same there and here. I don't use this Dremel too often. Maybe because I'm just, I'm kind of afraid of the tool. Uh, I know guys that use it all the time. I think I just need to use it more and get used to using it. So again, this is really low RPM. This bit I have in here is actually the perfect size for going in and recreating any of the little wrinkles that I end up taking out by doing this, so this may be the way to go rather than the razor blade. So I'm pretty, pretty easily. I'm gonna do this. What I'll do is I'll go through and I'll get I'll I'll get the wrinkles first. Because that way if I end up going over them a little bit, there's the, the details there and I'm not gonna lose it. right there I went in I got the wrinkles first and I can come back over this area and when I lose a little bit of that material from taking out the mold line the wrinkles are still there so they're deeper so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna go through and do this and we'll come back Okay, so it took about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so uh, on this arm to go through the Dremel. Now I am gonna go very lightly with the super fine 3M sanding sponge. Now this has been used quite a bit, so it's not full strength. And I'm just gonna give it a very, very light sanding on, that, on the mold line. And uh, that'll help me just kind of pop up any trouble areas that I may have missed. But you can see here, I went and created, recreated all the wrinkles and stuff that were there with the Dremel. And this is looking really good. So that went pretty quick, about 10 minutes to this arm. Not too bad. And then once I get this in primer, that'll really tell me if I have any other areas. But I think, from what I can tell, this looks really good. So uh, we'll continue on and then we'll pin and glue the arms. Okay, so I just gave everything a bath. And now what I'm doing is I'm gonna, I'm gonna pin the arms, but I don't think I'm gonna glue them yet. I think I'm gonna pin them. Put, give everything a coat of primer to check my mold line and everything, make sure it looks good. So I've, I drilled a one eighth inch hole on uh, each of the arms. And then I'm gonna use my uh, blue tack here. And this is how I mark the the next hole on the on the body. So just get in, get to warm it up. Is this working? Yep, okay. You can probably hear the lens focusing in the video. There's nothing I can do about that. Okay. So give me a bath. One of many baths. I, I, I spent a lot of time washing parts. <laughs> so we're going to take the blue tack. We're going to stick it up here in the up in the adjoining part. I don't need a whole lot because these keys are really really good. They're tight. So I think I just need a little bit. A little bit. Just put it right there in the in the body. And I'll drill this hole bigger, I think, in the end. Then we're gonna give it a good push. Like that. 
and that's where that hole goes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mark that with my X-Acto blade. It's hard to see. You probably can't see. I can barely see it, but right there. And again, he's hollow. I don't mind hollow casted pieces as long as there's enough uh, <clears throat> meat on the, um, as long as they're poured thick enough. I've had some hollow pieces where it's way too thin. Okay, so I'm using a brass rod, 1 8 inch. And so this is where, so is it not, absolute perfect so when I go to actually epoxy this I'll make that hole in the body a little bit bigger just so I got some wiggle room but I'll epoxy it and I'll clamp it and I'll be good and I'm gonna do the same thing on this already got a hole drilled these are keyed slightly different I don't know why they did it this way it's kind of interesting I like this side better where they where the keys flat up right in the crook of the arm this one's like right here for some reason I don't know why it's not like you can put the, I mean, if you don't know your right from your left, then and do the same thing. We're gonna give that a shove. Just gonna get off of this. Sometimes you have to score or roughen up this, this area. <clears throat> Especially if you, if you try to do this before you give it a bath, there's still mold release on it. And the blue tech doesn't want to stick. Gonna get a little push. Okay, I can kind of see it, but get a little more blue tack right there. There we go. You can see right there where that goes. Again, this is going to be absolutely perfect because when I go to epoxy, I'll make this hole like one size bigger. Just get some room to maneuver and get everything set right. I could probably get away without pinning these, but I always like to pin. It's just a good practice. And these brass, because I can, that's a good fit right there. Sorry, I'm off camera. That's a pretty good fit. It's not perfect again, because I can get it tighter there. But this gives you a sense of what this guy looks like, looks like together. So now I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go throw a coat of Stylo Res on this thing and check out my mold line and see, uh, make sure I got it all. Um, cause I really, I can, it looks good, but until I throw a primer on it, I really can't tell. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to throw some primer on this. I'm going to let it dry, check the mold line. And if it's good to go, I'll get the arms epoxied, um, on, and then, uh, we'll fill the gaps with some Aves or, yeah, probably Aves. Um, and then I'll dry over it and we'll do a final coat of primer. The base has been washed. The base is good to go. It's ready for primer and paint. So uh, yeah, so we'll go throw some primer on these and uh, we'll take a look at the mold line. Okay, so I put a coat of uh, Style Rose primer and everything and now we can see if we need any additional work. And there's a few little spots where I need to go in and clean up a little bit more, not too bad. Uh, this arm, I'm not sure if you guys can see this or not. It may not show up in camera at all. Um, this actually side looks really good. There's a spot. A um, couple little areas in here, right in there, I see a little bit. Um, now there's only a light coat of primer, so you're seeing the sound of the Sharpie come through. So I'm, what I'm looking for is a definite mold line. This side looks pretty good. And then on, I went ahead and primed the base too. Over here, for the most part, looks really good. So I'm just gonna go through with some, some uh, light sanding again. 
with some sandpaper just to kind of clean that up any any more actually right here is a good example where I miss them so I'm going to go with the Dremel and hit that so I go back through hit the seam line again with the mold line and then uh, one more coat of primer and then we'll um, glue the arms on and fix that actually I won't even do the primer I'll go ahead and glue the arms on and get that puttied so that way I can do one more thing of primer before paint so uh, yeah it's looking pretty good uh, there was a mold line on the inside of the legs here I took care of that um, and it looks pretty good so again just gonna go through and hit any areas that need to be um, hit again with some light sanding and then we'll uh, pin and glue the um, well already pinned we'll glue the arms on and, and fill the gaps all right so I went through and sanded those down real lightly again I think we're okay now uh, I went in with the Dremel and hit a couple of those deep crevices again so now I've mixed up some five minute epoxy this is JB Weld, it doesn't matter the brand. I enlarged this hole to 3 16 and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spread the epoxy on the inside, and unfortunately, the way this is sculpted, there's no, really no good way to clamp the arm in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to epoxy the inside, I'm gonna put a bead of super glue on the outside and kick it off, and that'll hold it in place while the epoxy dries. It's maybe a little overkill on this kit, but, um, I don't like to use super glue to do the main joining because it's very brittle. Um, epoxy has a little bit of gift to it. So if I was just to super glue these in and they got bumped or something, there's a good chance that that glue joint could crack out. So it's a good idea to use epoxy. So I'm just gonna mix this up. Now it says five minutes, um, which means you have five minutes of working time. Uh, that's not actually very accurate. The more you mix up, the quicker it'll kick off and the more you stir it, the quicker it'll kick off. So I just mix up a little bit at a time. Uh, I'm gonna do one arm, at, one, one arm at a time. And this stuff, this actually takes quite a while to cure up all the way. I usually like to let it sit at least 12 hours. Um, so I just mix it up. I like to use an epoxy brush to get a really even coat. And I'm just gonna make sure I put a lot in that hole there. And again, I'm just gonna kind of put it really just kind of here in the middle. And then I'm also gonna go coat to this side. And the peg, treat the peg really well. It's like that. Now you notice I didn't go all the way to the edge. I might get some ooze out. I don't want a lot because I wanna be able to um, again, use some super glue to kind of tack this in place while it, while it cures. Now, I have a couple options on how to get this to fit. I'm going to close the gap up as much as possible in the armpit. That's harder to get to with putty. And I'll worry about puttying the outside edge. So I won't be able to putty this for a while. I'll we'll let this um, glue set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple drops of this thick CA in, in here and kind of let it run down in there. And this will just hold the arm in place while the epoxy cures. Because I really, like I said, I don't have really a, a good place to um, clamp onto this because of the way this, just the nature of the sculpt. A lot of curves. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but I'm just putting a bead of thick CA in the seam here. giving it a good squeeze. I'm gonna kick that off. I'll hold it there for, I don't know, 10 seconds or so. And that's just gonna hold the arm in place while the epoxy cures. Just like that. get where I wanted it to go. Like I said, I'm going to close up the gap underneath the armpit now as much as possible because it's just harder to get to. 
with putty. That's it. So we're gonna let that sit. We'll do the other arm the same way. We're gonna let them dry for, um, I don't know, I'll probably dry for a few hours. I can go in there and start doing the putty work. Um, I like for full cure on this epoxy, 10 to 12 hours, just to make sure it's 100% cured. Um, that's just my comfortable zone with it. So we'll do the other arm like this, and then uh, we'll come back and fill in the gaps. Okay, so on to uh, filling these gaps. It's dried enough to where I can go in and work on the seams now. Um, so we're going to use good old Aves. Um, I like I said in previous videos, I actually need to throw this out. This guy, this, this Aves is really old. It still works. It's just hard to work with because it's it's so old, it's kind of dried out. Uh, new Aves is like really buttery and easy to work with. <clears throat> but it's two part epoxy, you mix equal parts A and B. Um, and I just kind of guesstimate about the same size and mix it together really well. I've had this stuff for, I think I bought this like three years ago. I don't use it enough to justify being that, buying that much, but at the time, like, buy, go big or go home. I'm trying my mom over everything. So, um, when I mix these, I kind of roll in my hands and then I fold it. Roll, fold, roll, fold. Like this. It's an even color. Actually, I have to take a pause and go pick up my son. Just realize, let's go pick up my son. It's cool. So just like that. And as you as you work it, as it warms up, it gets soft. So that's mixed up pretty good. Uh, for this guy, I'm going to roll out some really small beads. The Gaps don't need a whole lot of filling, they're pretty good. So I'm gonna lay some of this in here. I'm using some of my metal sculpting tools. I'm gonna push it down in there. Filling that in. Now, what you can see as it's kind of crumbly, because like I said, this is kind of old age, it doesn't prevent it from curing. It's just not as easy to work with. I don't have any, um, I'm out of, uh, what do you call it, um, Solvacet. So you can use water, I actually use a little thinner <laughs> to smooth it out. So I'll dip my tool in some thinner and I'll smooth it out like so. And then while it's still kind of, while it's still workable, I'll go in and I'll sculpt in some of the detail that would be there from the skin. And get rid of any excess. I like to use Q-tips a lot too. Dipped in the solvent set or the thinner. And I just work a little bit at a time, throwing around that gap. Now A is takes 24 hours to uh, to set up completely. You can actually paint on it right away. Um, I've done it before, and I'm like in the middle of painting something, and I realize I missed a spot or a repair. I've painted on it right after I've applied it, but I'll let this dry for a few hours, um, and then I'll get this in its final coat of primer tonight. And then I'll probably be it on this project for a little while. While I go back and work on some of the other stuff I've got on the bench. Again, I'm just using a Q-tip dipped in thinner to smooth that out. And the sculpting tool. 
I should have to go here <laughs> to get my son. But I like to pack it in that, pack it in those gaps, really fill them up. Just like that. And I'll just go in here and kind of scrap some of the skin texture in there. I'm not a sculptor by any means, but it's a relatively simple texture to, to replicate. I'm just kind of scratch some wrinkles in there. And I can even do that after, as, <clears throat> excuse me, as as hard as I can do it. It'll be a little, probably a little easier to get the look I want. Uh, Troy's sculpting style is very, and I don't mean this in a negative way, it's a very rough style. It's very um, free-flowing, let's put it that way. Um, this sculpt right here plays very well to his style of sculpting. Um, and that's just the way he sculpts. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to do that around all the seams. You can see that it's looking pretty good actually. So uh, yeah, we'll do that around both arms and then uh, those will be filled and we'll be ready for a uh, last bit of primer. So I'll show you that once uh, it's done. Okay, so it took about 30 minutes or so, but I got the A's all in and I went in. It, this starts to cure up relatively quick. I mean, this has probably been maybe an hour, 45 minutes. So it's to this point where it's kind of like a, almost like a hard rubber consistency. And that's the perfect time to go back in and kind of re-sculpt the details. Because if it's too soft, it doesn't work. It's, it's harder to deal with, I think so. I think. So I just took um, this end right here. It's kind of like knife end. I just went in and I just kind of followed the skin that was there and some of the folds and just kind of scored in some of these lines. And hopefully this will blend in really well. Um, and you can see when you do that, it leaves these little crumblies on top. So I just take a Q-tip and just really lightly just kind of brush those away. Now this will cure up. I'll let this cure for, I don't know, three or four hours, maybe five hours, and I'll throw some primer on it and take a look at it. And then uh, it'll be ready for paint, but it looks really good. So uh, I'm going to call this video done. It um, goes over the steps of getting them to sit stand, pinning them, seam line or a mold line removal and doing the A's. So that's a good work in progress video. Shouldn't be too crazy long like some of my other videos, but he's looking really good. And it looks great in primer. You get a sense of what he looks like. <clears throat> so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time and we'll start slinging paint on the next video. Catch you guys next time. Bye.